Okay, welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Philipp Dressler. I'm a technical HL coach uh, and a Scrum Master at MIC. And today I want to present you or guide you through uh, seven powerful questions that you could ask your development teams um, and that might help, maybe, I hope. Okay, so... Uh, yeah, first of all, don't be afraid. This is not the first question, but just a few, a few words about my, my employer, uh, MIC. What is our vision? So we want to run the best cloud platform in customs, in global customs and trade compliance. Um, if you're interested, please visit us. Everything's there on the homepage. Uh, just go there and check us out. Uh, we'd be very happy. Uh, okay. And the word best is kind of powerful. So I want to show you a few things that I think help us to, to accomplish this vision or reach this vision. Okay, first of all, do you develop yourself? Uh, in software development, we, we talk a lot about developing software, but I see teams that don't have a lot of time to develop themselves rather than software, so to say, okay? So um, teams usually need a, play, need a place to practice their skills. Um, and we at MSC found uh, technical HR enable, uh, enabling as a good solution to this. Uh, what is it exactly? By the way, there is a great talk from Pia on Tech Talks. So uh, check it out if you want to know details. Uh, but just in general, we as technical HL enablers or technical HL coaches work together with development teams over a defined period of time. So let's say three months or so. Okay. And then we switch to another team and we try to enable their technical skills. Uh, we want to improve the way together with them, improve the way how they write code. Yeah. Um, there's another way to do this which doesn't work re really good, which is uh, individual trainings. Um, they're not as sustainable usually as, as collaborating continuously, okay? In these technical skills, at least. Um, of course, this kind of costs something. You need to slow down to speed up in the future. You need to invest in your current skills in order to get better in the, in the future. Um, and we already see this paying off in, in quite a few teams. Yes. Okay, second question. Uh, can you show me how you to, how your users work? Okay, try to ask yourself or your developers. Can you handle your software just like your users do? Um, obvious answer would be yes. Sometimes it's not as easy. Uh, we, we've just seen this, and we've seen it very beneficial to get the users as close, or sorry, the, the developers as close to the users as possible. Okay, they really need to get in the mindset of the users in order to deliver great software. Um, uh, also features, a lot of features out there, not only uh, at MIC, but only in the, also in the whole industry, are built and rarely or never used. Okay, this is uh, quite a big uh, issue, uh, I think. So think about, can you measure how much your features are used? If you cannot measure it, ask your users. They will answer, probably, hopefully. Okay. Um, and really try to not build something just in case you might need it somewhere in the future. Um, this will save you a lot of time and you can concentrate on the stuff that's important. Also, in the, we tend to build the thing right. So we tend to test a lot and, and, and do that, all the technical stuff, uh, but also try to really challenge, are you building the right thing? All right. Next question. Can you give me an example? I think the most powerful question you can have in, in in software development. Uh, the human brain works in a way, or it has way more problems in, in understanding abstract concepts rather than uh, concrete examples. So uh, I brought up this, this little example here. If you read through those blue cards, uh, it will be kind of, I mean, this is an easy example, I know, but it will be kind of harder to understand the concept behind this, behind this. Blue cards would be acceptance criteria in our case, uh, then having those green cards as an explanation for them. Okay, so if you see the group that you're in lost in lost in an abstract discussion, and this happens all the time, right? We all know this. Um, ask somebody to bring up an example. It will usually um, get you to the target uh, way faster. By the way, examples make great test cases. If you write them down, um, automate them or test them manually, whatever helps. All right. Uh, next one. We at MSC like to do uh, domain-driven design. We think there are a few great concepts or a few great, great uh, methods in, in, uh, in this whole uh, cloud of domain-driven design. Um, the most important one is probably, in my opinion, the domain language, finding a common language uh, that you can talk effectively on yeah, and also write code effectively. Um, sometimes it's hard to fight the right words, so you need to learn how to talk business. And sometimes those words can be found in the past. 
um, especially in enterprise applications like we have to deal with at MIC, um, the customs domain is something that's been there forever. Okay, we've uh, things have been shipped over borders uh, longer than software exists, and sometimes it's just easier to think a hundred years back and say, okay, how how did people call this and that back then? Um, and you might come up with a great domain concept doing this this experiment. So, yeah, try to try to ask yourself. Uh, the stagecoach, okay. Uh, don't worry, we didn't make the stagecoach a domain concept in our in our code, but this kind of helped us to the, the postcoach in German to uh, kind of sketch down our processes and understand them and find the right words. So this was kind of a, I don't know, it kind of got well known in for some reason the stagecoach, and I think it's a great painting as well. Okay, topic rework. If you ask your teams whether they have to deal a lot with rework. Um, which usually happens, right? It's just part of the game. Um, you could challenge when they test their code, the point in time when you test your code, okay? Uh, usually a symptom for this, if you see a lot of Jira ping pong, which we also know, so a ticket goes from developer to tester and then back to developer, uh, maybe even back to product owner, and this usually takes forever. Now, here are three quick wins that you could uh, try out, okay? First of all is discovery meetings or requirements workshops. What is this before you start pulling a ticket into your sprint? Talk it through in detail. Okay, try to find examples for, for the feature that you're about to develop. Um, what you're doing there is you test the requirement before you've written a line of code, and that's the cheapest way to test something. Um, works great for us. Uh, Test-driven development, I'm a big fan of this. Uh, obviously, because, I mean, obviously it brings a lot of great test coverage. I don't have to say this, probably. Uh, but also, and what's more important is it will lead you to great decoupled design and sustainable design. Uh, so I think it's a great method to just, just try it out if it works for you. Uh, and pair of mob programming. I absolutely love this. I think it's so easy to apply. Um, you just need to learn the basics and then get into it a little bit. And the power of it is you will have instant feedback, the, the, the shortest possible feedback cycle on the code you write. So you will, you won't have to do any, any reviews or, Ideally, not even too much testing. So this will all happen together in the team and everybody will feel responsible for the code. So those three things, try them out. Maybe they help if you haven't. Okay, big topic, technical debt. Um, ask your teams, is it easy for you to modify or extend your existing software? Yes, so how do you deal with technical debt? Te technical debt will accumulate, it will make you slower, it will happen. You can't really do anything against it unless you only, I don't know, produce software for the, for the paper bin, uh, which I hope you don't. Um, but it's really, uh, it, it's really, really interesting, actually. There are, there are studies that evaluate the productivity loss of development teams of 23%. Now, usually if they hear that, people say, okay, this is not too high. It feels like we have more. Uh, there are other studies, studies who say it's 42%, which I think is more realistic in our case, at least. Uh, and this is totally normal, right? This is not a bad thing. It happens to everyone. The question is, how do you deal with this situation? Um, and usually, I, I'll start with the negative thing or with the negative part of this. Uh, some companies, or you could try to just add more people to a team because it takes longer. This usually doesn't really help. I, I really like the saying, you can't give birth to a baby in one, one month with nine mothers. So this kind of applies to this. Um, it's usually not very sustainable. Uh, you could also keep paying off the debt, okay? You could invest in your software and just uh, run at the same speed you've always done. Um, this will usually lead you to the teams uh, breaking down to a halt and small changes in the software will take you forever. Um, this is usually also not the thing you want. Uh, and nobody wants to work long hours. Working long hours is 1990s, right? We're, we're over this. Um, so how could you approach it in a better way? Apply good technical practices. Again, this is what we do, uh, or we try to enable our teams in technical agile enabling. Um, refactoring, good design, and so on. Okay, really try to focus on this. I really like the boys code rule, which means always leave, concerning code, always leave the place nicer than you found it. Okay, so always do some refactoring, always try to make it a little, a little better. And sustainable software development. Um, to me, what this means is, uh, automated testing and good design principles. Okay, this will be sustainable and easier to adapt in the future. 
Last but not least, uh, ask your teams whether they're happy. And this is more a question to maybe to you as a leader. Um, Nicole Forsgren does a lot of, a lot of uh, great research in the, in the HR um, community, basically, and she found that satisfaction and well-being correlate with productivity. This might not be surprising to anyone. Um, still, it's kind of, yeah, it's, it, it's a fact. So what could you do? Create an, an, ex, an inspiring working environment. Whatever this means yeah, to you and your company, um, I, I hope I could give you at least some, some thoughts to it. Thank you very much.